Hi, welcome to episode 269 of The Corner of Knit and Tea. My name is Laura. I'm also known as Fluffy K on Ravelry, Fluffy Kira on Instagram and Twitter. I blog over at thecornerofknitandtea.com, which is where this episode and every episode show notes will be. I have an Etsy shop called The Corner of Knit and Tea, where I sell my hand spun yarns. And we have a Ravelry group called The Corner of Knit and Tea. Hello, how are you? It is Monday, March 16th. And the world is a very different place than it was last week or even the week before. Um, I hope that all of you are well, that um, you are adjusting to changing situations, um, and that uh, above all you are healthy. Um, things here are okay. I uh, switched to working from home about a year and a half ago, so in terms of my daily routine, not much is terribly different. Um, all of my work is done online and virtually. Um, my husband is now working from home for the next two weeks with me. Um, we don't have too many cases of coronavirus here in Kansas City, but we are sort of bracing and we are trying to flatten the curve and stay home and uh, prevent new cases from cropping up. Um, we are both lucky. We both have jobs that we can do and can work from home. Um, we both uh, will get paid throughout this time um, and our businesses should survive. Um, so, like I said, I count us lucky. We also, also are lucky to have health insurance. So, um, we are both young and healthy and I hope that we will fare well. That's not to say um, I don't have friends and relatives and probably some of you who are at risk and my thoughts um, and love are with you. Um, if you need anything and there's anything that I can do, please don't hesitate to reach out. Um, and if you would just like to chat during this trying time, you can find me on Instagram and on Ravelry. And um, I have been limiting some of my internet during work hours just because I've been trying to concentrate on getting work done. But from about five o'clock in the evening forward up until my bedtime, um, I am available if you would like to chat or talk about knits or just um, find someone else out there. Um, like I said, this is sort of an unprecedented trying time and my anxiety is definitely at an all time high. I am hoping to channel it into things like reading good books. Um, I have a huge pile of unread books. Um, I have lots of crafts. I have pens and ink um, and I am hoping to uh, spend time with my husband and uh, keep sort of happy through creating. So I wish you the same. Um, like I said, if you ever want to chat for any reason, you know where to find me. So today is Monday, March 16th. The weather report is uh, in the 40s. Uh, it's kind of gray. It has not been raining too much, um, but it is overcast and not terribly exciting outside. I am still in my sweats. Um, and have done quite a bit of work for the day. It's about three o'clock, so I thought I would get a podcast in before I finish up, and then um, I raided the vegetables at the supermarket, and so I am going to make a vegetable soup for dinner. So those are my plans for today. Let's uh, get into the podcast. So today I am drinking grapefruit oolong. Luckily, I have a stash of tea and yarn to get us through the next several weeks. This is from Adagio. It is one of my favorites. It is oolong tea, grapefruit flavor, orange peels, and sunflower petals. So, and I am drinking that in my Hershey's Pennsylvania mug um, from the Hershey factory. Now, of course, it's not chocolate, but oh well. It is a little citrusy and a little smoky and um, one of my favorites from them. So let's talk about what I've been crafting. I have been hard at work at my on my sample sweater for Zen Yarn Garden and have lots to show you, or at least lots of knitting. As a reminder, I am knitting the River Cable Pullover, which is a brand new pattern by Shana Bilo. It is a uh, heavily cabled front with a funnel neck, 
um, and then sleeves that have cable details on them. I finished the back several weeks ago. I finished the front this week at midnight and posted a fun photo on Instagram. Um, the uh, front has a cable panel that meets at the back neck, making this, giving this one the appearance of a bib. And so I wore it as such at midnight, which unfortunately will be our last midnight for a while, at least in person. Um, but we're gonna go ahead with Google Hangouts. Anyway, I finished the cabled front, which is lovely. It just has this big panel of cables on the front. And so then I got into the sleeves. And so far I have completed the first sleeve. I knit this one uh, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Finished this Saturday evening. This is obviously a sweater in pieces, but just some simple raglan shaping. Um, so I have sleeve one, Sleeve number one done, and I am already several inches into sleeve two. This was last night's work. So my guess is I will finish this sleeve in a matter of a couple days, put the whole thing together, do the neck treatment, block it, and then by next week I hope I will be able to show it to you as a finished piece. Um, this has been a really pleasurable knit. The pattern is well written, clear, easy to follow. The cable chart um, is basically the repeat of the same cable pattern multiple times across, um, both on the front and the sleeves. And so once you memorize that, um, it's pretty good to go. I am knitting this whole project in Zen Yarn Garden Serenity Worsted. So this is the tag. I'm sure you've seen this a million times before, unless you're new here, in which case, welcome. Um, this is a 75% superwash merino, 15% cashmere, 10% nylon, um, worsted weight, 175 yards of skein in the colorway gray wolf. So that is what I'm doing. And these two skeins, it looks like have a little bit more variation in them than some. So I'm getting more of a, you can see kind of where I'm alternating skeins. On some parts of the sweater, the alternating is a little bit less obvious um, and it doesn't pull quite as much. So um, I can sort of notice it here on camera, although I think it's less noticeable in person when I'm looking at it. Um, but clearly one of the skeins is just a bit darker. So um, I will continue to work on that until it is completed. Um, and that is kind of all I have to show you for my knitting for the week. I am trying to crank through this one um, because I would love to start on something for myself. Um, and so that is that one. Now I will say that um, a few weeks ago I ordered some yarn from um, one of my clients, Abundant Earth Fiber. They were doing a small batch of their um, Joseph and Annie the base, which is a merino base, which has just a little bit of tarky in it. I used this to knit um, that bobble cowl that I knit several weeks back, and I talked about wanting to do a whole sweater in it because it is super squishy. So this is a special batch um, in, nat it's called Natural Speckle, and it's pepper. It's 90% US Merino, 10% Washington Tar Heat, um, 230 yards of a DK weight yarn. And I ordered enough to make a sweater, and um, remember how I said I was bitten by the, or I was all aboard the bobble train? Well, the sweater that I would like to knit is called Faded Nev, and it is by Andrea Maury, and or Andrea Maury, who is, um, let me see if I can get us a better photo. Um, Andrea Maury, who is Drea Renee Knits, um, and this um, sweater of hers is basically a um, sweater that combines her love of the uh, fade and um, her love of baubles. And so this is what the pattern looks like. Um, and she knit it, like I said, in yarn colors that fade and with baubles. And um, as it turns out, I'm actually um, basically going to use hers as an inspiration um, because there are quite a few things about the pattern that I actually want to do differently. So mostly I'm going to use her idea and her cast on numbers. Um, and then I'm going to do a little bit of my own thing. Um, mine will not fade. Mine is actually going to be all in this yarn. Um, and then what I have done is I have picked out a skein of hand spun that I really, really love. Um, it is greens and kind of teals, and I am going to use my hand spun to do the baubles on each section. So it's going to be kind of this oatmeal colored sweater with some bright green, and I don't think the uh, camera is doing it justice, at least not from what I can see. This is just bright, um, 
springy uh, greens and blues. And so um, I think this is Yellow Brick Road, which was a Southern Cross fiber colorway. Um, I'm not 100% sure. It is. Um, it was in my spinning bin and it was one of the few skeins that was not labeled, but I'm pretty sure that's what it is. And um, I'm going to have to do some digging because if I run out, um, I will need to get some more, but I think I have between 350 and 400 yards in this skein. Um, it's actually more of a fingering weight, but I am hoping that it will be enough to do all the baubles on the sweater if I do the rest of the body in this one. So that is the project that I would like to do. I'm expecting to have a little bit of extra time at home in the next several weeks. Um, and so if I can finish the sample work that I need to do, then this is what's next on the needles for me. I also have um, a few more hat patterns in the works. So that is kind of an abbreviated version of the knitting content, although I am sure that there is more to come, um, especially depending on how long this staying home thing lasts. So let's talk about the spins. Um, last week I showed you uh, a beautiful braid that I had started spinning from Hello Yarn Fiber. Um, I did not know how to pronounce it. It was Irish and um, the name was uh, Irish inspired and it was a 70s merino with purples and golds and it was really really beautiful and I finished spinning that this uh, week and this is what it looks like. I uh, tore it into small strips and uh, spun them uh, worsted spun and then applied them for kind of maximum barber pullage and it's super soft and super lightweight and I cannot tell you um, it has not been washed yet so I can't tell you what I think the yardage is going to be. It looks to me probably like a sport weight so um, somewhere between three and four hundred yards but I'll know better um, a little later this week and if you are interested in colors such as this it will be up in my Etsy shop um, if you're interested in treating yourself to a little something while you're staying home. Which does remind me, and not for myself um, specifically because I will be okay during this time, um, but I would encourage you to seek out your uh, favorite crafters and makers during this time. Um, if you can afford to spare some extra money, I would encourage you to um, either buy product from your favorite makers or buy gift cards from your favorite makers. Um, the economy is just... It's unclear exactly what is going to happen, but I do know that with um, all the cancellations of the Spring Fiber Festivals and shows and um, teaching seminars, there are a lot of our favorite makers, indie dyers, pattern designers, teachers, um, who are going to be struggling a lot in the next few months. And so if you can, um, and obviously this is a dependent on what you can spare for yourself because you have to put your own oxygen mask on first. Um, and and uh, like I said, I am going to be fine. So while I would love for you to purchase some of my hand spun, please um, do think about the indie dyers who do this as their sole um, source of income. Um, and think about spending with them. There are some great websites that have been um, put together for this purpose. Um, Nitrino has a um, Vogue Knitting Live marketplace and she or he, I'm not sure who is behind that, put that together um, to support the vendors who uh, were involved in Vogue Knitting Live Seattle, which was supposed to be held this past weekend and unfortunately was canceled. Um, Stitches United, which was supposed to be held at the end of the month in uh, Stamford, Connecticut, will not be going forward. So I encourage you to visit that site, look at the exhibitors who were there, and uh, shop their shops. Um, Nitty has also put together a uh, page of people who could use your support based on um, those who are not able to vend at festivals. Indie Untangled has a marketplace. Um, and in general, I would just encourage you to, um, you know, watch Instagram and um, check out your favorite folks to see if they're okay. Um, also check out your local yarn stores. Our local yarn store has decided to close for the time being. However, they are offering curbside pickup. They are also offering video chat. So if you want to call the store and pick out some yarn and have them help you pick out some yarn, they are doing that. And then um, you can just drive up when your order is ready and pick it up. They will run it out to you at the curb. So um, 
you know, there are so many ways to support our, um, our favorite makers, and I would just encourage you to, if you have some spare bandwidth and spare resources at this point, to do so. Um, and like I said, don't worry about me um, unless there's something in specific you um, were looking for. So that brings me to my final moment, which is what I'm going to be spinning this week. Um, since I've been uh, sort of forced into staying home and uh, taking some time to spend with my crafts, um, I decided to um, pull out something from Deep Stash and work on a spin for myself. And this was something I bought years ago, and I do mean probably back in 2012, 2013. I can't tell you exactly. It is a loop bump from Loop Fiber Studio, who is located in New York, and who I'm sure would love your support um, because she does a lot of the uh, local fiber festivals. This is one of her loop bumps, which um, she basically puts together uh, these... Uh, well, they're bumps, and they draw from the center, and this one is called Teardrop, I believe, sorry, it's called Raindrop. It's 4.7 ounces of merino, bamboo, and tussa silk, and it ranges from this bright turquoise all the way out through black. Um, my plan with this bump is to spin it as a super fine um, single, and then uh, Navajo ply it, or chain, sorry, not Navajo ply, chain ply. I try, I am trying to ex uh, excise certain words from my vocabulary. So please forgive me if I screw up and add them in. Um, I am trying to chain ply um, this loop bump and then hopefully I will come out with enough yardage to um, complete a shawl or something of the like. Um, but I have been saving this in my stash until I was spin um, well enough to produce a yarn that I really want and particularly until I spun it thin enough such that if I uh, chain plied this um, which is uh so the bumps are basically um pencil roving that she has put together in these bumps as you can see um you can kind of pull from the center um and that's what you're spinning with but since it is um a small thickness it is not and the presentation, it is difficult to turn it into a two-ply, which is usually my preference for maximizing my yardage. Um, so hopefully I can spin this thin enough that when I chain ply, I will get enough yardage for a project that I want. So um, that's going to be a challenge of mine this week to sit down at the wheel and play with this one. Um, a few other things that I can think of. Um, if you follow Clara Parks, she is, I believe, just at Clara Parks on Instagram. Um, she has started a daily newsletter, um, which she started uh, both to um, bring us some peace and tranquility during this time and also as a means of supporting herself. She has started a daily email um, where Monday through Friday she emails you um, things that she has found, soothing sounds. Um, there have been uh, poems. There have been beautiful photos of places she has been. Um, just a little light of positivity in your day. Um, she announced in today's newsletter that she will be starting a um, subscription model. You can still subscribe for free, but if you have money to help support her, um, she's asking for a $6 donation per month. Um, so far, I, she hasn't put all of the mechanics into place so I haven't been able to do that yet um, but I would recommend um, even if you can't support her monetarily if you are looking for your daily dose of um, like I said peace tranquility and sometimes fiber um, she is someone who is doing uh, something right now honestly I would just encourage you to spend time with your family and loved ones I hope that you stay well um, and I will talk to you again soon so I will say, as I always do, happy knitting, happy spinning, happy sipping, be safe and be well, and I'll see you next time.